Hi, I'm Pedro de Abreu. I was born in Brazil. I came to the U.S. when I was 15, three, without knowing how to speak a word of English. And three years later, I had a startup. I had a nonprofit. I recently graduated from Harvard, and I started a company called Fortinex Innovation Group, through which we consult with organizations around the world on productivity and the bottom line through the brain and the behavioral sciences. And I have learned a few things along the way, and I wanted to share one particular thing with you today. And it's this concept of being the chess player and not the chess piece. And chess is analogous to life in a, in a sense that we have these rules that you must adhere to. And on the other hand, you have these choices that you can make so that you can change the end game. For example, the fact that we must grow old, that's just a fact of life. There's nothing we can do about this. So that's an unbreakable rule that must be respected, right? On the other hand, the fact that you must get good grades and then get a dog and then have children and then settle for a, for a job that is less than you could be doing, that's when you have a choice. So that's life by design as opposed to living life by default, right? And in chess, for example, we know that we must move the pawn always forward unless it's capturing a piece on the diagonals. So again, that's an unbreakable rule. That's a fact, just like growing old in life. And what the books tell us is that the pawn must move at the beginning of the game from E2, goes to E4, and then you pull your knights out. That's what the book says we should do. That's the choice we have, right? And just like in life. Now, we know that the best chess players, they defy those assumptions. They don't play by those rules at all, unless it's within the overall framework of how you want to play this, your game that you should be moving from E2 to E4 if that's within the overall framework of how you designed your game to be like, right? But you won't play from E2 to E4 just because everyone else is playing it. That's what a chess master won't do. Um, and the same thing in life is that you don't just get job X because that's what everyone is doing. You don't just do things because that's what everybody else is doing and they're getting the same results. You do the things because that fits the overall framework and that fits the overall strategy of how your life should be. And I think all those great chess players and the great people who have ever lived throughout history, they always swim against the current. They respect the rules on one hand, the rules that must be respected, they cannot be broken. On the other, they break all the assumptions. So today I'm an entrepreneur, but it wasn't always the case. Not too long ago, I was wandering the streets of Brazil without hope, without purpose, and without much expectations of what I would end up doing in life. But the thing was that I didn't accept those assumptions. At the end of the day, when I came to the US, I couldn't speak a word of English. I went to a small town in South Carolina where everyone was white. There were a few black students and then there was me, the Hispanic who couldn't speak English. So according to those assumptions, to the assumptions that everyone had of me, at most, I would end up learning how to speak English okay and then work at a gas station, say, for the rest of my life. But the thing is that I didn't accept those assumptions. I didn't accept what the books told me that I should be doing with my life. So what did I do? Instead, I started companies. Instead, I went to Harvard. Instead, I wrote a book. Instead, I speak to audiences. And that's something that we can all absolutely do, but it all starts with the awareness, with the awareness that these forces are at play, with the awareness that we don't have to follow life the way that other people have told us that we should follow it. We don't actually have to follow it by the books that we can design a life that is great for us. As long as on one hand we respect some things and on the other we keep on shattering all those stereotypes and we shatter all those assumptions. So I think the same way that I learned, perhaps one of the most important things that you and I can do when we are in front of a classroom is to give students and people alike the permission and let them know that they don't have to be the chess piece, that they can absolutely be the chess players. Mm -hmm.